partie moderne, et maintenant une partie modernisée. Nous, nous sommes absolument en faveur des entreprises, absolument en faveur des entreprises qui peuvent, qui peuvent créer les grands profits pour les communautés, parce que c'est seulement avec les entreprises et les profits qu'on peut réinvestir l'argent pour, pour supporter les, les, les programmes sociaux forts et efficaces pour la province. Priorities they have. Oh, we talked about uh, Tom talked about fracking. I hear that a lot from people concerned about the water table. It gives me a chance to talk about genuine, sustainable development. The fact that what we need in New Brunswick isn't another magic bullet, not another Brickland, not another Atcom. What we need is genuine, renewable energy. So that's the sort of thing I'd like to see focused on. That's the sort of message I've heard from people on the doorstep. I also hear and it's linked to patronage. The problem of too much regulation for small businesses. That it's nearly impossible for a small business to operate efficiently here because you've got to work through so many different departments, and it's simplifying those sort of processes, making sure that we put the, the emphasis on worker health and safety rather than needless bureaucracy that makes life hard for business owners. And I think something else I'm looking forward to getting to work on. And what, how much of a straitjacket does the provincial debt place any government in? Well, it, it's a huge, it's a huge straitjacket, and that's why in the last election, the platform I wrote for the New Democrats, we were the only party that brought forward a concrete plan to first to reduce and then eliminate the deficit, and then to eliminate the debt as well. The Liberals and Tories said that, oh yeah, well, balance the books and then they made 257 I think it was new promises we don't do that we're going to talk about a small number of things that are achievable we're going to balance the books and then we'll get the job done on, the, on our priorities at the Forum in Moncton uh, on shale gas. There were government, business, and industry people there, but the general public wasn't there. What will you do if you win the election to stand up for the people in the House on the issue of shale gas in New Brunswick? So there's one way to stop fracking in New Brunswick, and it's called an election. In the, ne the next election, in 2014, the Democrat candidates across the province will talk about how we can have progress, we can have development, we can have new industries in this province, but they will not include fracking. Bonjour. Oui. Euh, oui, c'est vrai. Monsieur Milker, vous avez dit dans votre discours à deux reprises que vous êtes venu au Nouveau-Brunswick cinq fois, que la province oui. est très importante. Pour vous, qu'est-ce que vous avez voulu dire par cela? Moi, je pense que la province de Nouveau-Brunswick est un terroir très prometteur pour le NPD lors des prochaines élections. Et le travail qu'on est en train de faire avec Dominique ici est une indication. C'est la première occasion qui s'offre à nous, au Nouveau-Brunswick, de présenter notre chef. Et je vais travailler d'arrache-pied avec euh, l'équipe pour s'assurer que Dominique puisse avoir des réelles chances dans cette élection. On sait, par ailleurs, qu'on part de loin dans Rotsé, mais euh, on doit commencer à essayer justement de mettre de l'avant nos propres idées pour que les gens comprennent euh, qu'après une centaine d'années d'alternance entre le patronage libéral et le patronage des conservateurs, les néo brunswickois ont enfin un choix. Un choix pour un parti intègre, représenté par quelqu'un comme Dominique Cardé. On a besoin d'un chef comme Dominique à la, à la législature provinciale et on va travailler très fort pour qu'il soit. Stratégiquement parlant, qu'est-ce que vous, vous, qu que vous voyez comme promesse? Vous dites que vous voyez un terreau fertile ici au Nouveau-Brunswick pour le NPD. Qu'est-ce que vous voulez dire? Parce que c'est très différent dans le sud du Nouveau-Brunswick. Les valeurs du Nouveau-Brunswick sont les valeurs du NPD. Moi, je rencontre des gens qui, dans leur collectivité, s'occupent les uns des autres. On a des groupes communautaires, on a des gens qui réalisent que les choix des conservateurs, l'élimination de l'assurance en foi, par exemple, pour les travailleurs saisonniers, va jouer un tour terrible sur l'économie du Nouveau-Brunswick. Donc, ils savent que le NPD est là pour se tenir debout face à Stephen Harper à Ottawa. Mais ça nous prend un Dominique Cardi ici, au Nouveau-Brunswick, dans la législature provinciale, pour se tenir debout face au même visée conservatrice à la Chambre de la législature ici. Can you just explain why you felt it was important to come here today? Well, we know uh, that it's important for the NDP to try at every occasion to bring forward our ideas. Dominic is an extraordinarily strong leader. He's got a great deal of international experience. He's got a lot of management experience. And we think that a leader like Dominic belongs in the legislature here in New Brunswick. You know, after over 100 years of alternating between liberal patronage and conservative patronage, New Brunswickers now have a choice. The NDP got 4.5 million Canadians to vote for us last time around federally. People were tired of alternating there between the liberals and conservatives in Quebec. They were tired of alternating between the front and the we saw the breakthrough that we managed to get through there. So the NDP is going to be working very hard in New Brunswick. We know that Ross say uh, has a lot of people who share our, our goals, share our values, and we're going to do everything we can
can in the next couple of weeks to connect with as many of them as possible. We really hope that we're able to get Dominic Cardi elected to the provincial legislature. Okay, just a couple of federal questions. Uh, the province last week announced it's going to start holding elections to pick Senate appointees. Your views on that? Well, as you know, the New Democratic Party has a long-standing policy of trying to work to eliminate the Senate. Uh, we don't think that the Second Chamber has performed a useful function over the years. And we also think that in a democracy like ours, a single elected uh, chamber like the House of Commons is what we need in order to represent everyone across Canada democratically. So we're not going to be, uh, start. we won't start uh, rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Uh, the good image for this year, perhaps, what we're simply saying is let's do away with the Senate. We know that's an important change. It's one that will require a lot of discussion, but it's the long-held view of the New Democratic Party that the Senate should be abolished. A lot of concern in the region about the changes to uh, EI. Any hopes of uh, the federal government softening its uh, position on that, do you think? Well, what you have to know is what Stephen Harper really thinks about the Maritimes. He's been very clear. Uh, a culture of being a bunch of losers is what Stephen Harper has already said about the Maritimes. So it's not surprising that an integral part of the regional economy, which is seasonal work, you know, you can't decide that you're going to have lobsters growing on the streets of downtown Montreal or Toronto. They actually are in the sea here, and they can only be obtained during a certain season. So people are used to working very hard in forestry, very hard in the fishery over a set season. And yes, employment insurance was paid into and collected by people doing that seasonal work. This is a hard hit to the province and to its economy that the Conservatives are pushing through right now. They're saying you're going to drive for hours or take a 30% cut. And that's what to us is totally unacceptable. You know, here Jim Flaherty boasts that any job is a good job. Well, I'm sorry, if you're a teacher, you can't be told to go work in the mines. And yet that's what the Conservatives are saying. Go work in the mines in another province. So we think we can do a lot better than that. And the NDP has a different vision of working here in Atlantic Canada. We want strong regional economic development. But we want it to be sustainable development. We say, for example, that we should be building pipelines west-east instead of shipping raw bitumen to the United States. Let's start adding those jobs here in Canada and here in the east in particular. The New Brunswickers have been told that their economy is struggling right now and shale gas can turn that around. How do you refute that? The, the best way to refute that is to explain to people that we've got to start thinking long term. Right here in Rossay, we have the threat of shale gas fracking right on the boundaries of the Rider. And it's a place that takes its drinking water directly from groundwater, treated of course, but it's a beautiful, pristine source of drinking water. That would be put in danger with fracking. Look at the American experience. Look at what's happened in states like Pennsylvania. People have to be made to understand that this is a false choice because they're being mirrored a certain immediate advantage of a, of a few dollars. We won't even provide that much, by the way, because natural gas is at its lowest price in decades. So the, the simple fact of the matter is this is a, a way to try to convince people with a carrot that the stick that they're going to get hit with is much harder. The long-term damage that it could cause to the water, what we've seen in other places where there's been fracking, now people are starting to rise up against it where it's been done for years. Don't start it here until we can have a guarantee as to what's being used as a fracking fluid. They won't even reveal the contents of the fracking fluid and they won't reveal it because they don't want you to know what's in it because they know that it contains known carcinogens and other highly toxic substances. There's a bit of a difference of opinion amongst the Atlantic Premiers on how to deal with uh, the federal government. Some have been openly critical and some like our Premier has preferred to quietly negotiate with Harper directly to try and soften some of these issues like EI reforms. What's your advice, the best way to deal with uh, the Harper government? Well, you can't hold out uh, your, you, you know, your hand to someone like Stephen Harper on an issue like this. He is shutting down Parliament. He's used closure over 30 times in his first year, absolutely unprecedented in the history of the Canadian Parliament. For the first time in our political history, we have a Prime Minister who believes he's the master of Parliament, not its servant. So anyone who thinks that they're going to low, low key uh, approach is going to get a result is in for a serious surprise. These guys are not about negotiating, they're about imposing. They don't want to talk, they don't want to negotiate, they've decided. So they will impose their will sooner or later, we'll do everything that we can in the House of Commons to stop that. But what New Brunswickers have to understand is that we need someone like Dominic Cardi in the legislature to stand up for these issues and not beg from Stephen Harper. The only 
way for us in Ottawa to deal with Stephen Harper is to stand up to him. That's why their voices are becoming so shrill with me. They don't know how to handle it anymore because we are in favor of development, but we want sustainable development. We do want more trade, we want it to be fair trade. And yes, of course we want more prosperity, but we want prosperity for all Canadians. They're having a hard time uh, finding a negative way to attack that. Well, C-38, the Trojan horse bill that's hiding all these terrible things, is particularly rough on environmental legislation. A lot of the legislation that has been protecting Canadian waters and fisheries for decades and decades is going to be gutted. It's going to be eliminated. So yes, it's going to allow certain projects to go through. Look at the number of oil spills that we're starting to see. Since the Conservatives arrived, we've removed any serious monitoring or controls. And now even in Alberta, I saw today the Cattlemen's Association is rising up and calling upon the federal government to start enforcing the law, something that the Conservatives have never done. This is interesting as well because this is a law and order government that doesn't apply the law when it comes to itself. And with regards to EI, um, the recent Asian said that those restrictions of 30% increase and um, an hour travel wouldn't necessarily apply to season workers. So they're lying. It, it, it's, it's in writing. And if, it, if they don't want it to apply, then they'll put it in writing that it won't apply to seasonal workers. We've asked them to put it in writing. They won't. So they're not telling the truth. They're trying to get through this thing. They're saying anything and hoping to get away with it. That's why we need someone like Dominic Carty to stand up in the legislature and say the truth. Because you're not going to get it from the Conservatives. And alternating between Conservative patronage and Liberal patronage has gotten us the type of weakness we have now. We need a strong leader like Dominic Carty standing up in the legislature for all New Brunswick. And you've made five trips here and you're here today, yes. so you're putting a lot of effort behind this uh, campaign. We are convinced that the NDP's message is going to start making progress here in New Brunswick. We know that the only way for us to form a government is to reach out to all progressives and try to unite them under the NDP banner. We're the only game in town when it comes to standing up to Stephen Harper. That's why we need Dominic Carty here in New Brunswick. Thank you. Thank you so much.